Hello and welcome to this lesson on absolute value inequalities. This is a continuation or an extension of the previous lesson on absolute value equations. This central question says, how do I solve absolute value inequalities? Did you know that the phrase plus or minus is an absolute value expression? Like if I ate a handful of M&Ms, it was 20 plus or minus eight. Well, that in between there means it could have, I could have eaten more than 12 or less than 28. So that, that phrase plus or minus is actually an absolute value inequality. It's kind of cool. There is no new vocabulary here. It's going to be absolute deviation. It's going to be inequalities. It's going to be absolute value. The same stuff we've been talking about. Okay, so one of the obvious differences between equations and inequalities is the fact that we need to graph our solution when we're done. Now, just like when we were doing absolute value equations, to take this, we can actually just kind of jump straight into the uh, the work part here. So we know we want this junk in here to be equal, oops, not x, 6, and we want that junk in there to be a negative 6, right? Because the absolute value of both 6 and negative 6 is 6. But now we have to worry about this uh, inequality as well. So the, very first, the first one here, when we make this stuff x and 6, the inequality stays the same. So it's just this, this problem pretty much without the absolute value bars. The second one, though, when we change the sign of this number, we also have to change the direction of the inequality. Okay, so the greater than changed to a less than. So when we change the sign of the number, we change the direction of the inequality. And in this problem, this is done because the x's are already solved, they're already by themselves. We don't have to do additional solving steps. So from here, we're just going to take that and we're going to graph it. And to make this easy to graph, I'm just going to count by sixes since I have both a positive six and a negative six. And then we're going to shade how from six, that's this one here. From 6, I'm shading greater than. I'm shading to the right of 6. So I'm shading outside, it looks like. From negative 6, I'm shading less than to the left. So this was unknown to us an or inequality where we shaded on the outside. There will also be some that are and inequalities where we will be shading on the inside. Letter B. So we want the stuff inside here to be a 0 0.5 or a negative 0 0.5. The first one, everything stays the same. The second one, when we change the sign of the number, we also change the direction of the inequality. There was nothing left to do here. There's no more solving needed. So at this point, we're just going to graph 0, 1, negative 1. That puts 0.5 at this dot here and that one there. Both of these do get solid dots. And the shade from the positive 0 0.5, I'm shading less than. My first thought is this is going to be an and. It's going to be in between. So let's check it. From the negative 0 0.5, I'm shading greater than. And indeed, it is in between. It is an and inequality. And you can double check that this works, but I mean, you could plug in anything inside here and it will work. If you plug in anything outside, like if I plugged in one here, I'm trying to zoom a little bit. There you go. If I plugged in a one here, absolute value of one is one. One is less than or equal to 0 0.5. No, but if I plugged in like 0 0.1 or negative 0 0.1, negative 0.1, the absolute value of negative 0.1 is just 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is less than 0.5? Yes. Okay, so we have our and and or inequalities back. We have our absolute values back where we separate it into the two separate inequalities. The only thing that's different is when you're changing the sign of the number, when you're making it the negative, you also change the direction of the inequality. Okay, I did too. 
you do too. Go ahead and pause the video and do these two right now. When you're ready to continue, hit play and we'll go through it together. All right, so the first one should be, oopsie, a four and a negative four. Boom, boom. So that gives me x is greater than four and x is less than negative four. And I'm gonna graph that. 0, 4, 8, negative 4, negative 8. So I'm counting by 4s. This works well when, when it's the same number on both sides. Uh, both of these do get hollow dots. And as far as the shade, from positive 4, I'm shading greater than, which is to the right. From negative 4, I'm shading less than, which is to the left. So this was an or inequality. letter D. When we separate it out, the X could be 2, the X could be a negative 2. So we've got X is less than 2 or X is greater than negative 2. I change the direction of the inequality when we change the sign of the number. And the graph. 0, 2, 4, negative 4, hollow dots at both positive and negative 2. And the shade. From positive 2, I shade less than. From negative 2, I'm going to shade greater than. So that is everything on the inside. Okay, let's ramp up the difficulty. So we've seen the easiest, the, mo the, the simplest problems. Let's get a bit more difficult. So here, if there was anything on the outside of the absolute value, I would get rid of those things first, like the next problem we're going to do. We're going to have to get rid of that three first. But in this first problem, there's nothing on the outside of the absolute value we have to worry about. So we're just going to take it and separate. Ones where this junk is equal to a positive seven and one where that stuff is a negative seven. And so the first inequality is just x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 7. The second inequality is x minus 5 is less than or equal to negative 7. When I change the sign of the number, I change the direction of the inequality. And then I solve both. So I'm going to add 5 on both sides. Add 5 on both sides. And we get um, x is greater than 12, and x is less than or equal to negative 2. And then the graphing phase. So there's the solve graph. Now, these do get a little tricky, again, because you have to get both of these numbers on the same number line. And if the numbers are far apart, like they are here, it can be a little troublesome to get them all in. Um, I'm thinking counting by 4s. Let's see. 4 negative 4, 0, 4, 8, 12. That should work. My pencil's not writing very well. 4, see, I had the whole 8 and it didn't write the whole 8. Come on. 8, 12, there we go. From at positive 12, we get a solid dot. At negative 2, we get a solid dot. And the shade. From the positive 12, I'm shading greater than, that is to the right. From the negative 2, we're shading less than, which is to the left. So nothing really terribly different out of the ordinary going on apart from that piece of changing the direction of the inequality when we change the sign of the number. Okay, letter B. So we're going to, first, we're going to have to get the absolute value by itself. So I'm going to subtract 3. I'm going to get rid of that piece on the outside. So absolute value of negative 4x minus 2 is 6. Oh, I put an equal sign. I don't want an equal sign. It's not equals. It's a less than. Okay, now I can take this and separate it into the two separate problems. One is where this junk inside is set to a positive 6, and 1 is where that junk is set to a negative 6. 
So negative 4x minus 2 is less than 6. Negative 4x minus 2 is greater than negative 6. I change the sign of my number when we change, or I'm sorry, I change the sign of the inequality when we change the number. And now I solve both. So I'll solve this one first. Add 2, add 2, negative 4x is less than 8. Divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4, and yes, I do have to change the direction of my inequality. x is now greater than negative 2. I changed the, I, I divided by a negative, I changed the sign of the inequality, the direction of the inequality. And the same thing is going to happen here. When I add 2 to both sides, I'm going to get negative 4x is greater than negative 4. When I divide by negative 4 on both sides to cancel this out, I'm going to divide by a negative, which is going to change the direction of the inequality. So that's what I'm going to work with. That's what I'm going to graph. Um, I'm thinking like negative 2... Hmm. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, uh, whatever. It's, it's good. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and that'd be a negative 3 over there. Negative 2 gets a hollow dot. Positive 1 gets a hollow dot. And now our shade. From negative 2, that's this one here. From negative 2, we are shading greater than to the right. That looks like it's going to be on the inside. From positive 1, we are shading less than. That is to the left. That is also on the inside. And there we have it. Okay. That should actually be letter C, I believe, huh? Wait, is that the same problem? How'd he get in there? Okay. Ignore him altogether. Okay, letter C. Go ahead and do that problem right now. All right, let's see. So you would have to start by dividing by 2 on both sides. And the absolute value of g plus 5 is less than negative 6. Now, something's striking my brain here as being odd, because usually, like, absolute value can't equal a negative. Right? Like, that's just not allowed. But this is not an equal sign. This is a less than. So can absolute value be less than a negative 6? It can't, can it? If it can't equal negative 6, it can't be less than negative 6. It's not allowed to be a negative number. So this problem actually has no solution. How many of you kept going past this and, and even separated and divided into like the positive six and negative six and kept solving? Whoops. You're not always going to know when you can and can't solve it until you stop and check yourself right here. Once the absolute value is by itself, can absolute value be less than negative six? No, not possible. So in the graph of this would just be like we did before would be a, a number line with nothing shaded in. And there we go. All right. Go ahead and quickly pause and try these three. These are, should be very quick and easy to graph and, and solve. OK. First one is going to be x is less than or equal to 8. And x is greater than. I should probably do this the right way. I'm trying to do it quick, and I should just do it right x is greater than or equal to negative 8. So that stuff is 8 or negative 8. I change the sign of the inequality. And so the graph, I would just do 0, 8, 16, negative 8, negative 16. Both got solid dots. And the shade would be from positive 8, we shade inward. From negative 8, we shade inward. So it's that. Number two, 3.5 and negative 3.5. That gives me u is less than 3.5 and u is greater than 3.5. I did change the direction of my inequality there. 
um, 0, 3.5, 7, negative 3.5, negative 7. So I'm counting by 3.5s. Makes it easy to put my dots where I want them. Both are hollow dots. Oopsie. Got my negative sign there. I put them in. From positive 3.5, we're shading less than. From the negative 3.5, we're shading greater than. So we get in between. Fraction. That's okay. V is less than 2 thirds. V is, I'm sorry, that's greater than. And V is less than negative 2 thirds. I change the sign of my inequality. So now 0, let's just do 1 third and 2 thirds. Negative 1 third, negative 2 thirds should be fine. Both the 2 thirds get hollow dots. Shade. From positive, we're shading outward. From the negative, we're shading to the left, less than, which is also outward. So there are those three. Very quickly done, not a whole lot to them. Okay, a few more. We're checking for um, proficiency. Are you completely understanding what's going on? So go ahead and pause the video and try these three right now. When you're ready to continue, hit play and we'll go through it together. All right, let's see here. Let me make my marker a little smaller. So this, we want stuff to be equal eight or negative eight. So x plus three is greater than eight, or x plus three is less than negative eight. We did change the sign of the inequality there. Solving both, so we subtract three on both sides and get x is greater than 5. Subtract 3 on both sides and x is less than negative 11. That's what we'll need to graph. Bigger than 5, less than negative 11. Um, I'm thinking I'm just going to count by 5s. So negative 5, negative 10, negative 15 puts positive 5 here negative 11 right there from positive 5 I'm shading greater than to the right from the negative 11 I'm shading less than which is to the left number 5 the absolute value is already by itself so I don't need to separate it so instead I'm or I didn't need to get it by itself so I'm going to start by separating, making this stuff set equal to 11 and a negative 11. So 2w minus 1 is less than 11, and 2w minus 1 is greater than negative 11. Change the direction of the inequality. Solve both. Add 1 on both sides. 2w is less than 12. Divide. And w is less than 6. Add 1 to both sides, 2w is greater than negative 10, divide by 2 on both sides, and w is greater than negative 5. I think I'm going to use actually the same scale, although the number lines look slightly different. I'm going to count by 5s again. 5, 10, negative 5, negative 10. That puts negative 5 here with a hollow dot, positive 6 here with a hollow dot, and shade. From positive 6, we're shading less than. From negative 5, we're shading greater than, which is on the inside. And last of these, number 6. Now this one, we do actually have to do a little bit of work to get this absolute value by itself. We have to get rid of the, the minus 8 as well as this times by 3. So we're going to start by adding 8 to both sides. 5m minus 6 is less than or equal to 21. Divide by 3 on both sides. And we get absolute value of 5m minus 6 is less than or equal to 7. Okay, now the absolute value is by itself. Now we can take it and separate it into the two separate problems. One is where the stuff is equal to 7, and one where it's negative 7. 
So 5m minus 6 is less than or equal to 7. 5m minus 6 is greater than or equal to negative 7. We change the direction of the inequality. And now we solve each. So add 6 to both sides. 5m is less than or equal to 13. And when we divide, we're going to get ourselves a little decimal. Um, 13 divided by 5 should be, what, 2.6. And on the other side, add 6 to both sides. 5m is greater than or equal to negative 1. When we divide by 5 on both sides, m is greater than or equal to negative 0 0.2. Two. All right, so those are our solutions. Now, as far as the graph goes, how do we graph from z negative 0 0.2 up to 2.6? Well, think of these without the decimals. Imagine this is the number 2 or negative 2, and that's a number 26. How would you graph from 2, negative 2, up to 26? probably counted by like tens, like, or maybe fives, like, I'm thinking like five, or negative five, zero, five, ten, fifteen. Oh, darn, that didn't quite work. Tens, negative ten, zero, ten, twenty, thirty. I think that will work. Ten, zero, and I'll show you how to change this. There, now, instead of counting by tens, we're counting by ones. And negative 0.2 would be right here. And 2.6 would be right here. And our shade. From 2.6, we're going to shade less than. From negative 2.6, we shade greater than. And shade everything in between. All right, so there we have it. And now we've had a whole bunch of practice problems. Hopefully you are more familiar with this now and, and you're really getting the hang of what's going on. You're, you're recognizing the pattern from one problem to the next to the next. So application. So this comes down to that absolute deviation thing again. So in case you don't remember the formula, the formula was absolute value of x minus the given was equal to absolute deviation. That was the formula. There we go. So let's see. A factory is manufacturing parts for a car engine. The cylinder must have a diameter of 5.6 inches. That would be your given number. That's the normal. That's what it should be. If the absolute deviation is greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to 0.2, the, cylinders can, the cylinder is defective. At what sizes are the cylinders considered to be defective? Write, solve, and graph an inequality. All right, write, check, solve. Well, actually, I'm going to shrink this down because I need, I need space to work it. We're going to take this and break it into where this junk is a 0 0.2 and where it's a negative 0 0.2 x minus 5.6 is greater than or equal to 0 0.2, and x minus 5.6 is less than or equal to negative 0 0.2, changing the sign of that inequality. Solve both. Add 5.6 to both sides, and x is greater than or equal to 5.8. Add 5.6 to both sides, and x is less than or equal to 5.4 and graph so now we have I'm gonna put this given number I'm gonna put him in the middle of the number line that's actually a pretty good bet because everything's kind of remember that other number line we did the previous lesson kind of you go up by a little bit and down by a little bit from the given number well I'm gonna put the middle number in the number line so I'm gonna put 5.6 here um, this is going to be my 5.8, this will be my 6.0, this is going to be 5.4 and 5.2. I'm counting by 0.2. 
That means I'm going to get solid dots at both 5.8 and 5.4. And my shade from 5.4, from this guy here, I'm shading less than. I'm shading less than 5.4. I'm shading on the outside here. And from 5.8, I'm shading greater than, which is on the outside here. So the cylinders are considered to be defective if they're outside of this. In here, they're good, too big or too small, and they're not good. Okay. Example three. On an IQ test, the median score is 100. That's true. That's that. They're all kind of standardized around that. So the average person should get around 100. And then the higher you get, it's more like the smarter is the wrong word, but the higher your IQ is, um, and then the, the lower you get, the worse the IQ is. An IQ is still considered to be normal if the absolute deviation is less than 30. Right? Solving graphing inequality showing the normal range of IQ scores. Okay, so x minus the given is our absolute deviation. That's the formula. Okay, the normal score quote unquote normal, the, the average score should be a better way of saying it, the, the, is 100. And it says it's considered to be in the normal range if the absolute deviation is less than 30. So if this is less than 30, then you're in the normal range of IQ scores. Okay, solve. Oops, I want to move that line down a little bit. Didn't mean to erase it though. Oh well. So if this junk is a positive 30 or this junk is a negative 30, x minus 100 is less than 30, x minus 100 is greater than negative 30. I add 100 to both sides, and x is less than, or I'm sorry, yeah, less than 130. Add 100 to both sides and x is greater than 70. And you do notice I did change the direction of the inequality there. So the IQ is considered to be in the normal range if it's less than 130 and bigger than 70. So I'm gonna put the given number in the middle. I'm gonna put 130, 160, 70, and 40 counting by 30s, counting by the, the, the deviation amount. So I'm going to get hollow dots at both of those places, since both my inequalities have just greater than or less than. We have hollow dots. And we are shading greater than 70, and less than 130 would be everything in between here. So your IQ is normal if it's between 70 and 130. Higher than 130 is considered to be like in the genius range, and less than 70 is considered in the mentally retarded range. Okay, this should be the last question. It is. So let's go ahead and have you try this. So go ahead and pause the video, read the problem. You'll need to write, solve, and graph the inequality. So pause the video, do it. When you're ready, continue, hit play, and we'll go through it together. All right, so Iron Man's boots can provide 300 pounds of force to help him fly. That seems like the normal, the given number. X minus given equals absolute deviation. So it seems like we're going to have this to start. Depending on how much charge his suit has, the force has an absolute deviation of less than 63 pounds. Less than 63 pounds of force. Right? Check. Solve and graph the inequality. So there's my right. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have space for all this unless I shrink everything down. All right. And so now this stuff should be uh, equal to 63 or a negative 63. So x minus 300 is less than 63, and x minus 300 is greater than negative 63. I changed the sign of the inequality. To solve, we're going to add 300 to both sides 
and x is less than 363. Add 300 to both sides. And x is greater than, I don't know, negative 63 plus 300, ooh, not that, 100 is 237. Okay, so that's how much force his, his suit can provide. And now the graph. I'm going to put 300 in the middle. And I'm probably just going to count by 50s. So I'm going to go, oops. 350, 400, 250, 200. So that's going to put our numbers 363 around here and 237 around there and our shade from 363 I can see it right there on the side that we are we will be shading less than 363 from 237 we will be shading greater than which tells me this is an in-between shade this is an and inequality So there we have the problem. All right, so how do you solve absolute value inequalities? Maybe talk about, um, you can think of how they're different than equations. So go ahead and pause the video, get down a little summary, and then we'll continue when you're ready. All right, so the only differences between solving absolute value equations and absolute value inequalities is, um, well, they get a graph. That's a difference. You need to graph your solution. But also when you're um, setting up your two different um, equations or inequalities, the first inequality is exactly how we expect it to be. But the second one, when you change the sign of the number, you also have to change the direction of the inequality. Other than that, it's 100% the same. Oh, I lied. Minus, um, it happens somewhere. There was one problem that we did where you had to divide by a negative. I don't remember where that was anymore. We had to divide by a negative, and that gave us, um, right, right here, let it be. We had to divide by a negative, and that we have to change the direction of the inequality when we do that. Okay, so that's kind of normal expected behavior, but that's just another difference between equations and inequalities. Okay, so thank you so much for watching this lesson and until next time, doodles.